complete. It's quite a complete pitch, um, but with a, a focus on the uh, on alternatives for corrosion, um, reinforcement corrosion sensors. Um, the case is being developed not only by me but also by my colleagues Nadine Meinen and Vicente uh, Ferragasi. Uh, um, okay, I, in general, I will follow the, the, the list of content as proposed, but I will start with a short um, introduction about the, the about research program that we um, are now uh, forming within TNO, which also gives the context of our very use case. So over the past uh, years, we are doing a, a research program um, looking into um, reinforced concrete uh, structures in the Netherlands. We have uh, a lot of them uh, due to uh, the amount of water that we have, as was presented uh, in the previous uh, lecture. Um, and in doing so, we are, have to account for multiple sources of uh, uncertainty, uh, as there are uh, randomness in, in material properties and well histories. Uh, and we also uh, put uh, attention to the uncertainties that arise when we step into the, um, let's say, advanced and non-linear finite element uh, modeling of these structures. One particular thing is then also that we um, do research with respect to uh, corrosion. Um, the assessment and prediction lay, um, lay out of our research program of it's relatively um, uh, standard in terms that um, we um, have structural health monitoring or information that we get that we use for the condition assessment by modeling these modeling that can take place on different uh, uh, levels, but then are used to update our search life predictions. So that's, I guess, one of these schemes that go around over the world with respect to that. Um, also part of this uh, research program is the development of a, a, a new uh, layout or type of corrosion center. The idea behind that is that uh, what would it mean if not only one physical quantity is being measured as a corrosion indicator, but we try to uh, simultaneously uh, measure multiple physical so in this case, we are measuring um, resistances on surface <coughs> uh, with respect to the code, but also um, current density and um, corrosion potentials, as well as also um, extra data, additional data from intake testing and sampling, for instance, water cement ratio or cement types. We then use uh, physical and statistical uh, models to uh, capture the relations and then come not only uh, with the sensor values but also with an uh, autonomous interpretation model. So this is what we need to do. We have uh, data, physics and expert opinions and all these uh, all this knowledge is then captured in a Bayesian uh, network, which then um, behaves as an interpretation uh, model for the sensor values and gives, as a result, the likelihood of uh, corrosion based on all the indicators. Here below, we see. Um, a simple configuration of the creation network for the interpretation. So in blue there are the intake uh, parameters, what is cement ratio, cement type, and in green there are all the uh, sensor values. And all these data are then combined um, in a kind of artificial uh, intelligence uh, uh, model towards the uh, predictor whether or not there is uh, active corrosion. And in fact, the outcome of this model gives you the probability of corrosion being active. Uh, 
and then the export the decision scenario. I, we want now to use the value of information uh, concept also to decide which structural health monitoring technique should the owner apply in a way that it results uh, to the minimum uh, to, to the minimization of the remaining service life costs. And of course, there are a lot of things where this depends upon uh, the costs, the accuracies of the measuring techniques, uh, the possible actions, as information has to lead to, uh, to action, uh, the actual state of the structure, and of course, the, uh, of course the benefits related to the period. Um, the decision scenario I presented in this uh, flowchart. Uh, decision maker would be the public authority or, or, or the municipality. We are looking at uh, uh, an objective function that uh, minimizes the life cycle costs. Um, performance is evaluated with respect to serviceability. So basically we will look at uh, crack sizes occurring as a result of the corrosion. Indicators, um, now, some of them I have already mentioned. So we have uh, corrosion from density, cover resistance, surface uh, resistance, and uh, corrosion potential. Um, a library of possible actions to be taken, uh, coating, cover renewal, or maybe uh, cathodic protection. And well, objectives I already mentioned the optimization of the cost, but it's all in the context of the maintenance actions. Um, yeah, we want to apply the value of information concept, also using two uh, alternatives for, for censoring. Uh, the first one is the well, let's say let's call it the more traditional uh, caution potential uh, measurements also potential measurements. And the other one, the alternative, is the aforementioned uh, multi-sensor uh, uh, sensor node. Um, but the case study might be general, as Dimitri uh, uh, suggested, but in fact we uh, took a fictitious but reinforced concrete slab which located in Rotterdam. Uh, we focus on the crack risk and the metal support, the two structural health monitoring techniques uh, for now, as it is still in development and development. We uh, look at two possible uh, actions, uh, that meaning no action or cathodic <coughs> uh, uh, protection. And below on this uh, uh, sheet, there are some figures that. Um, Describe the, the properties and dimensions of the of the case. We for now are still making quite a large uh, um, assumptions, as as you can read here. Um, we state now uh, that those measurement techniques are deeply expensive, and also we state now that the uh, sensor node. Uh, will have a better information compared to the half self potential measurements. Um, an indication of this uh, better information is given in these probability tables, where, um, where the likelihood of probability is given that a type of uh, sensor gives a positive indication of depreservation, given that there is actually also depreservation present. The methods applied um, is uh, again a maze network. And uh, Jorge this morning uh, explained some uh, features of a maze network already. Basically, all these yellowish uh, nodes they stand for stochastic parameters, physical parameters. Then we have these uh, squares, which are decision nodes. So alternatives can be chosen, and the effect of those. Choices can be calculated. And then we have the green diamonds, 
which uh, stands for utility nodes where costs can be uh, accounted for. Um, so this decision node, for instance, decides whether or not there is structural monitoring to be applied, and also what kind of structural health monitoring is applied. So the traditional uh, potential uh, measurement for the multi-sensor node. Each of them have a cost. Then observations with this uh, measurement or monitoring tool are uh, obtained based on five uh, models, which then have to be translated towards um, a load effect or on, on effect, in this case, uh, a practice. Uh, these practices are then associated with costs. And also these um, derived quantities are then related to uh, actions. So indeed also in this peak then uh, monitoring uh, 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 obtaining new information will lead to somehow to actions or decisions to be made about actions. So the 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 models involved in this study are still uh, under development, and what we will do is uh, add uh, prior models, we have prior models for the declassification. We have to take into account the recent uh, developments of our uh, not sensor node. Uh, the costs, as I stated, they are uh, taken equal to each other now. They have found to be quantified accordingly, uh, uh, appropriately. Uh, the time as a parameter to be included, uh, other actions like uh, uh, a coating or uh, the removal of the problem. And uh, we also have to have a closer look at uh, the spatial variability or the uncertainty associated with that. Um, results not to be obtained as it is still a uh, development. Um, well, basically, at the end, um, the, the value of information has to be, uh, will be calculated, so that will be uh, an outcome in terms of, of euros or money. Um, but also, uh, decision rules will be uh, obtained, so the type of sensor will be uh, chosen for, but also uh, the corresponding maintenance uh, policy will be will be a result. Uh, value of the structural health monitoring information for the owner or um, concessionaire. Um, for the owner, it will uh, uh, obtain a uh, minimized total uh, maintenance costs. Um, we will also then uh, provide the optimal structural health monitoring and method, given the options that were investigated. Um, accompanied by the optimal maintenance policy for the next years. And for this maintenance, maintenance policy, uh, it has to be said that this policy can also be uh, adaptive or dynamic. So the VAC network that I showed before uh, is being used for the value of information and study. But once it is there and uh, a certain monitoring um, um, device is uh, active, it can later on still be used to update the, the maintenance policies for coming years once information is also actually obtained from the monitoring system. Uh, these are uh, results for the owner, but I think also <coughs> with respect to the, to the sensor, there is some information uh, uh, obtained. You get uh, uh, inside the value of the information of the sensor. Um, it can be used as a kind of business case for, for the sensor. And um, it could be or will be um, uh, uh, development incentives for, for innovation and, and developments for new sensors. Thank you for your time. very much indeed. Um, 
we have uh, this can be general concrete bridges. Uh, do you have uh, uh, do we have first questions from the audience? What is your impression of uh, health monitoring for concrete bridges for a class of bridges, let's say concrete bridges, which is the classical structures we monitor? My, my general question here also for the audience is are there any or do you apply for a class of concrete bridges. Let's say you have many concrete bridges and you select, based on some principle, five to do the structural health monitoring. So out of a class of structures, which one you monitor? Are you applying this or are you applying this in Portugal? So you have a class of structures and you say, we have to take the most critical ones and see what we can conclude for the others. I believe that we are doing that. Uh, this is my first yeah, question. That, that, that way you on that path. I don't have a stable framework for that. Yeah. Is, uh, everybody is uh, searching to classify the bridges and in order to, to put the, their knowledge to sensitivity, risk, and, uh, and uh, priority, and everything. I think it is uh, a good approach for everybody. And the inspection program or the, the, would depend on the, let's say, on the criticality of the bridge. For sure. It's for sure. So you would appreciate if guidelines would focus on this. So this is a very interesting thing to see type of structures. Are there some questions here before we take the break? We have five minutes. Any questions? Discussion? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe a discussion point is uh, you're mentioning um, that you prioritize or program based on criticality, but in terms of monitoring, what is that criticality? Is that <clears throat> that they have the highest or no or the highest failure probability, or is it that they have the highest uncertainty in terms of the strengths? And maybe that's a well, thing to be, dis be discussed because it's Uh, well, you, you mentioned two uh, uh, possibilities, but they are, of course, very much related to each other. Yeah. The uncertainty of the strength that gives you um, a correct or incorrect feeling about the probability of failure. In this case, we have a live test here, which was uh, the monitoring or inspection, and uh, was related to service delivery in this case. Really in the context of uh, failing on the structure so it's a little bit less, uh, uh, there are no less consequences in the form of that. Um, and in that, uh, for that reason, I also admit that in the Netherlands, not much, not many bridges uh, are being monitored for this coordination uh, mechanism. Basically, they are. Regularly uh, inspect visual inspection. Uh, we do think, wherever that uh, there are, um, I call it that there are, um, there, there's a, a vast number of bridges uh, arriving in a, towards a state where uh, corrosion will be. So the, the research that we are doing now, that we know, is basically also to be prepared uh, and see if, uh, for instance, this monitoring also uh, the kind of priority list can be uh, set up or um, some uh, maintenance actions can be postponed for instance and then can save this money in that direction. So we not yet do a lot of monitoring for this uh, mechanism, but we expect that Post future will be a real issue, and we have to be prepared. Uh, do I have a <laughs> Thank you. I think that this is a good, very good question, but I think that the framework are the same. Uh, no matter we are talking about bridges, um, dikes, or uh, slopes, or whatever. So the question. I, I believe that everybody in first uh, try to classify the criticality according to, to the behavior. 
So at first we we we, we do inspections, questions with or without um, uh, sensors. We do inspections. We classify the, the the health index, so the state of the of the, and then we decide to, the way to follow uh, a structure uh, depending on the on the risk of failure and the risk of degradation. So, as you, as you in your presentation, you decided to put some sensors in some dikes, depending on, in fact, the first inspection, and also you classify at first if that, that uh, is uh, approved or not approved, meaning that the dike needs to uh, further, um, further the development, further studies. And then I think that our framework is the same. At the first, we classify the bridges and the slopes and the, and the whatever structures uh, depending on the, the technology. We know already that uh, that precast bridges give us more uh, concerns than uh, hyperstatic bridges, and with, and then that kind of bridges need more um, follow up, and of course sensors. Are well kept in order to to monitorize by in, in the in the in our uh, headquarters in order to to remote control all our infrastructures and I think that the concerns are more or less the same. I agree. Thank you very much. <laughs>